Hi. I'm R.T. Stillwell. Today, we're going to be discussing with Dr. Stephen Wing, Professor of Epidemiology at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, about some of the potential health consequences of toxicity and radiation in Fukushima. We're holding these talks in a rock garden, and we're hoping that this will serve as a good communal ground in which to engage in these important discussions. I started out working on radiation at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, studying the cancer rates of the workers there who are involved in producing nuclear weapons. And that was in the 70s? Um, so the Oak, oh, at Oak Ridge, they started there in the Manhattan Project in 1943. And uh, I started working on the studies there in 1988. And by that time, there were, uh, they had been monitoring the radiation exposures of the workers the whole time since 1943. And we looked at, and are still looking at, the relationships between the worker doses that are measured with their radiation badges and their cancer rates. So that's how I got involved in radiation studies. And then later, I got involved in studies at other of the nuclear weapons facilities in the U.S. And then um, also involved in studying the cancer rates of people around Three Mile Island in relationship to the radiation that came from the accident there in 1979. What did you find? We found that the cancer rates went up in the areas that were exposed to the plumes of radiation from the accident there, particularly the lung cancer and leukemia rates. So uh, I think the doses for the people there were higher than what was admitted by the industry and the government. And it's partly, I believe, because the, there were larger releases, but also partly because of the weather conditions that kept the radiation plumes close to the ground and concentrated. So people have been really focused on Fukushima because it's such a severe nuclear accident. And also because of the earthquake and the tsunami and the devastation for the people of Japan. And certainly the radiation dangers are greatest for the workers who are going in to try and fix things in a terrible situation. Uh, with the re reactors there that have melted down and also the fuel pools that are in trouble. And I would guess that the information on how much radiation they're exposed to is not that good. Or at least it probably wasn't that good in the early days because of equipment that wasn't working and levels that were higher than what the working equipment was designed to measure under routine operations as far as getting the environmental data. Um, there, the radiation exposures themselves are, are very complex because there's some forms of radiation that are like x-rays that everybody knows about from medical exposures. And x-rays um, just go through the whole body. That's why they work, to take pictures of your insides. And the gamma radiation that comes from these nuclear plants 
is like roughly like x-rays it just goes through your body and that's the easiest thing to measure because it travels in air and you can use a film or things like films to, to measure the gamma rays. What's more difficult is to measure the beta radiation and the alpha radiation. So all of this stuff is coming from the radioactive decay of these unstable elements that are produced in the fission uh, process that is the basis for nuclear power. And so the gamma is easiest to measure, but then some of the elements when they undergo decay emit beta and alpha radiation. And beta radiation can penetrate just a little bit. Uh, beta rays can give you a dose to the skin. Um, and alpha radiation isn't even a problem as long as it's on the outside of the body, even on your skin. But it, it's, it's the most dangerous if, you, if it gets into your body, either inhalation or ingestion or absorption through, through a wound or something. But beta and alpha radiation are also important at Fukushima, and they're important for the workers, but so far I haven't seen much information on either of those types of radiation. So that's a real problem. Uh, we get told about doses, and for the most part, it's gamma doses, and they're leaving out the fact that there are other types of radiation that they're not telling us about, and they probably don't know about very well. To measure the internal radiation, particularly the alpha, um, but the beta as well, they ideally need to have urine and fecal samples and that kind of stuff. And they need to know when the intake was so they can extrapolate back from what comes out in your urines, for example, to what went into your body and where it went in your body. So there's been a lot about iodine, and that's important because iodine concentrates in the thyroid. So that's an example of a type of radiation that doesn't affect the whole body. It mainly affects the thyroid. It's also an example of a type of radiation that doesn't last very long. The half-life is about seven days. So it's going to basically be gone in a few months. And iodine is important in milk. Um, when cows graze on feed that is contaminated, like pasture, by radioiodine. Um, so if you're in Japan near Fukushima, you know, it makes sense not to drink fresh milk because it could be contaminated. Um, so after the workers who are getting the biggest doses come the people who live nearby and the people who are supporting actually the workers in the plant because they've got to be fed and watered and supported so there's other workers that support the nuclear workers and then there are the people who live nearby and from the information I've seen there are areas beyond the zones that were initially declared uh, off-limits off where there have been, you know, there, where there are fairly high levels of radiation. And that's partly why the Japanese government has raised allowable limits for the public and even children have raised al allowable limits at, at schools because there's nothing they can do about it, and they want to declare it okay, rather than saying it's not okay, 
because they can't evacuate everybody in a huge area. So what are the consequences for people being exposed there? Well, lots of studies of populations exposed to these kinds of radiation show that their cancer rates go up. And mostly from studies of animals, it's also known that their genetic effects, meaning that their mutations that can be passed on to the next generation. And all of that will increase as people get more exposure. Now, there's also a lot of worry here in the United States because the radiation from Fukushima is blowing in the wind and it's coming over here. And some of it is coming down here where the, there's rain. And by the time the radiation has come this far, for the most part, the levels are lower, a lot lower. Exactly how low, I don't know. Um, and it would require a huge effort to figure out where it's all going. And it would be at some point impossible to know where it's all going. And how it's, how it's moving in the environment and how much people are getting exposed to. But the main thing that, um, the main point I think people here should realize is that there's no safe dose of radiation. So the more radiation exposure there is here, the more effects there'll be in terms of cancer and genetic damage. But it'll be spread out, you know, in the whole population. And the levels are low, so the magnitude of the effects will be low because the effects on um, cancer and the genetic effects are proportional to the dose. So as the dose gets lower, the response is lower. And I think it's detrimental for people to become too worried about everything they do here in this country. If the doses got higher, then what food you eat and where you go uh, is going to could become more important. But at least for now, I think from everything I've seen that we should all be vigilant and keep an eye on it, but not worry too much because we could mess up in some other way um, inadvertently, you know, expose ourselves to something else because there are lots of hazardous things in the environment in addition to radiation from Fukushima. And there's lots of radiation in the environment that comes from other places than Fukushima. Most the, the, the biggest doses to the U.S. population come from the medical industry. The biggest radiation dose is from CT scans and you know, radiotherapy and all kinds of diagnostic x-rays. That's now the dominant source on average for the U.S. population. And what's being added to that from Fukushima for most people is very, very small. So the important thing for people here to do is to learn about radiation and nuclear power and to work with the groups that are already organized to try and create a sane energy policy that reduces people's exposures from radiation but also from the pollutants from coal burning and from oil burning and other kinds of energy production that are producing hazardous 
things that affect us. 